Hi guys, to another Cycroft episode. So this episode will be all about fixing our mob switch situation in both the nether and the overhead. And first of all, we take a trip towards the nether perimeter to check on the quarry, because it's been running a day without anybody on the server, and yeah, we'll see if this works now. So like I showed in the last episode, when I arrive on top of the quarry here, the piston bolt end, I have to turn this off and wait 8 minutes to make sure that the quarry um, yeah, properly shuts off. Okay, only one lamp left and there it goes. Now we can check on the quarry and it's still it's interesting to see if the quarry uh, didn't crash. <laughs> because think about it, nobody is on the server and the whole thing is working. The whole quarry picks up blocks. <laughs> Brings the blocks to the TNT duper where they get destroyed, picked up the minecarts, put in a furnace ray, and while well, nobody's in the server and this is 3000 blocks away from spawn, it's kind of crazy. And I'm yeah, always happy to see that the quarry really survived the night. Ah, look at this, just two more layers and we would finally reach the nether fortress. But yeah, now let's deal with our mob switch situation here in the nether. So, on top of the bedrock, we have those flying mob switches. So we have um, 140 shikers in packs of 70 in those flying machines. And they create quite a bit of lag. In fact, I'm quite sure that those two mob switches here create more lag than a whole chunk loading and the quarry. <laughs> because they are sitting uh, all in minecarts and hold with 200 en 280 entities. And because of all the collision hair checks, so they are yeah, quite laggy. Back then, when we came up with this concept, we didn't know better um, how to make a proper uh, mob switch in the nether without creating a lot of lag. But since Knemon released his yeah, chunk loading video, the basics about that, um, can now actually make a better mob switch. That doesn't even require shulkers. So yeah, they're kind of useless now in the nether. We're even not even sure what we're gonna do with the 140 shulkers, which were really <laughs> a pain to get. And yeah, probably just gonna drive them out. So I brought some invisibility potions in order to use those flying machines. Uh, you have to be invisible because all the blocks would turn into block 36 and then the shulkers are able to see you again if you sit in a minecart. So you have to be really careful, also take off your armor and use invisibility potion uh, if you're using flying machines with shulkers in them. But now that I think about it, it's probably a better idea to move those shulker switches away uh, once we have the new one. <laughs> so yeah, we're safe here. Okay, let's head back to the nether hub. So for the new mob switch, we had to go to the old perimeter and I need to pick up some of those here. So wither skulls. So by now, probably also know uh, how the new mob switch will work. So wither, like the shulkers, um, counts towards the mob cap, but doesn't despawn. I guess, yeah, that should be enough. Uh, while we're here at the old perimeter, I can also show you something. Uh, T5 actually fixed our gold farm, and uh, this was a never-ending story. So, first came up with this concept in 1.10, then the farm got broken uh, during the 1.11 snapshots because of the removal of translocation, then made a fix during the snapshots, which also got immediately broken, <laughs> and then uh, T5 made a new version for 1.11, which got broken by 1.11.2, and now we have a new version. So 1.11 we used uh, slime blocks to push the gas forwards, um, yeah, to kill them or to the holding cell, we could also pick them up. But now we actually use minecarts alone. Now let's turn this on. So the gas sweep all the yeah, pigmen, magma cubes and gas over. And then uh, every so often there's a minecart now uh, started that would pick up the gas on the side. And yeah, they brought to the side and put into the killing cells which could be rebuilt to pick them up if we ever need a gas again for some kind of a mob farm. I've n not shown this uh, on a video yet, a separate one, um, because by now I'm quite sure that Mojang uh, fixes whatever we came up to fix the <laughs> golden gas farm. Um, so I wanted to wait, wait for 1.12, so yeah, I guess Mojang will work in 1.13 on rails to, to break this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That moment if you have more wizard skeleton skulls than soul sand. Um, so when first joined me, he's at the moment shoveling some soul sand 
um, because we need about 280 to 350 visitors, I guess quadruple to quintuple mob cap should be enough for our server. Um, yeah, so we want to build the mob switch far away from the nether hub. We want to go out about two and a half thousand blocks. Um, there are two reasons for that. So first of all, that we don't accidentally um, load the mob switch if we don't want it. And the second reason is if something goes wrong with the 250 visitors, then um, yeah, they could cause havoc <laughs> two and a half thousand blocks away. That doesn't uh, affect us at all. Um, yeah, two reasons for that. Um, so then, yeah, in order to activate the mob switch, we want to make an instant repeater line um, going from the nether hub. So there will be some kind of a button somewhere um, to the mob switch. So we just have to activate the chunk loading there, which won't be much. And then we can also instantly turn it off again. Um, so we want to have the instant repeater line below the bedrock ceilings. We have some old ice tunnels that we used before we had the nether hub. Um, so that those are perfect. And yeah, so we're going to start digging now and building them up the repeater. All right, the instant repeater line has been built. So this goes on for two and a half thousand blocks and you can instantly turn this on and off. Of course, uh, we use redstone dust, it will create some lag, but since it's not used very often, um, yeah, it's fine. Okay. So we finally arrived at the wizard mob switch with the instant repeater line we just power or deep power those yeah, chunk loading hoppers. So we just have four of them going in a circle. Actually I forgot to put in items in the hoppers. Okay, now oh, they activated. And yeah, just those four hoppers are enough um, because we have the permal loader that I showed in the last episode the Gnemo build. And yeah, super lag friendly to have the mob switch because the wizards would be in lazy chunks. They still count towards the mob cap, but they are not processed at all. They're just written to a list where they appear as yeah, mobs that count towards the mob cap, but they don't collide or have any AI enabled or anything. So they won't cause any trouble. I tested this in a test world. I had 500 wizards in there and if they're lazy chunks, no effect at all. Of course, if you go near it with 500 wizards, then you would have severely uh, severe troubles. Okay, so the plan is now to spawn the wizards in. We have to set up something. I brought some dispensers. So, first space, I guess, here to go out one more. So, here we put in our wizard skulls. Then we need um, directly under the bedrock. We need um, three pistons that push up soul sand, and then we need a double piston extender on the side. So soul sand gets pushed up here, okay. Um, because this will be here. Then the double piston extender here on the side also pushes in some soul sand. And further back. And this is the basic setup. So I'll quickly wire this up. Okay, I've wired it up. I haven't tried it yet, but I guess it should work. So let's quickly try it. And this makes a wizard. Perfect. Of course, this is uh, not super automated, so I always have to uh, replace the soul sand and also start this manually. And the wizard is gonna make quite some damage. And yeah. We put in 320 wizards in there. Didn't bring more uh, wizard skeleton skulls. Those wizards make quite some sound. So block sound at 0% and yeah. If you have 319 of them one spot, yeah, they make quite some sound. Okay, let's put in the very last wizard. Okay, try to get out of here. 
we have some FPS issues definitely. And that's the last one. Look at that. Ooh, they got me good. Now we definitely don't want to come back ever again to this place. Okay, I'll just run away. And yeah, this should work. So whenever we turn this line off, then the visitor mob switch is enabled. Uh, now mobs should spawn uh, in the rest of the nether. And if you turn it back on, then it should take a while until the chunks unload up to 45 seconds. And then mobs are yeah, able to spawn again. Uh, it has a little flaw that if you restart the server, we always have to re-enable the system. Alright, so the threads on the sled is uh, turned off. So the mob switch is active. I guess the best way to find out if everything works as it should is just to fly around the nestle a little bit and see if you get got any mob spawning. Of course, there's a plan to move this lever here inside of the nether hub. We actually have plans to expand it and you'll definitely find a nice space for the lever. Alright, so let's go for a little flyover. This was our very first nether fortress. We had a basically a manual form, we just ran around and yeah, killed the mobs manually. Sword, looting sword. This is more open nether, so you would definitely get some mob spawning now, but as you can see there's nothing. Um, we also have to test if we uh, get the mob spawning again, if we turn it off. So I'll head back. And now I'll try to disable the mob switch again. So this will usually take a while until the chunks unload over there. Um, also, if the other players are moving around, it might not work. So, yeah, let's just go into the same direction again, to the open nether. And see if you can... Uh, there, we already have some mobs spawning. Okay, so as you can see, it works. So let's see if you get some other mobs spawning. So it wasn't just a fluke here, you can see Pikmin. Yeah, no more mobs spawning again. So we can turn it on and off now. Great. Alright, so we can also go back to where we started the episode now, to the Shulker mob switch, and we just moved him out. So take off the armor, and definitely drink an invisibility potion, and leg. Okay. Let's get in the minecart. Wait, actually, I need to remove the dropper again. And now we can drive this thing out of here. Uh, this is also kind of nerve wracking all the time to use the. And it doesn't start. Great. Yeah, of course, there's a, there's a dropper here. So I guess we blocked this really good. Okay, let's try again. Okay. So if I wouldn't use the invisibility potion and the, yeah, no armor, then uh, while those blocks turn to block 36, they, the shulkers could actually see me. So yeah, if you go for large distances, you always have to set a timer or whatever. So you definitely don't forget to use an invisibility potion. So I just moved them like 500 blocks away from here and we'll deposit them there. Maybe they become useful again. So I'm running a little bit out of time. To end the episode, we're gonna do a showcase. Um, so my efforts build up a AFK leaf farm. So this was a project that I started one year ago. Um, didn't quite succeed there. And then with the help of methods and enemy, we were able to make a quite decent farm. Um, so I guess let's check it out. So the first thing you will notice that we use a spawner, a skeleton spawner. And this is method stock um, for the auto XP. Um, so you, we use mending shears to yeah, replenish the durability. I guess we will make a little showcase. So methods is ready. I'll put myself into spectator mode so we can get a better overview. And yeah, this is how it works. Um, so methods has shears in his right hand. He just has to press down right click. I guess he's using a script. No, just the F11 trick. Okay. Holding left and right click mm -hmm. same time. And his other hand, he is holding a sapling, so it's holding both right and left mouse. Um, he breaks one of the logs that grows, and then he places a sapling, and immediately this iron block is pushed in front, um, so he can't break the piston which is behind. Um, Methods is actually aligned 
so he doesn't break the sapling. So saplings don't have a full hitbox, like so, like a normal block. Um, so yeah, you would aim just here on the left side. Um, so you can't break it accidentally because if you get an next bag, it's actually possible that you place and break a sapling in the same game tick. And in order to avoid that, we aligned methods here on the rails so this wouldn't happen. So yeah, he's also aiming at zero zero. So he's getting most of the leaves. Um, he's not getting all the leaves, so just the ones that are directly in front of him. The leaves in the back are broken by pistons. Um, so you actually yeah, can run this farm without an external sapling supply. We get enough saplings back from the leaves that we crush in the back. Um, yeah, the farm only works with birch trees. Birch trees are the simplest ones for, for this uh, farm because they reliably grow five high, you can force them to, and they also generate leaves uh, only at the yeah, third lock, or the height of the third lock, and further up. An oak tree uh, wouldn't work as well because it generates leaves lower, which is an issue, and they will also grow four high. So at the moment this farm would only work with jungle. We might actually make a version that uh, might work with oak and jungle, Spruce uh, is a little bit more challenging, and um, yeah, dark oak would be a real challenge. Um, then, yeah, we also store the leaves as always in shulker boxes here. This is the known shulker box filler we showed a few times. Um, there are some logs stored here, and yeah, we already have over 50,000 birch leaves, quite, not, quite nice. Then, yeah, let's check out. Skeleton spawner, so we built this next to a skeleton spawner, and yeah, pretty, pretty much standard design. Skeletons are elevated by water blocks, get some fall damage, and then are killed by method stocks. Um, he, I think you also healed him sometimes. Yeah, I have a daylight sensor set up that will just dispense a potion every 20 minutes. It's, it's a little overkill. You could add a counter, and maybe only do it every two days. Mm -hmm. Once potion brewers are fixed, it shouldn't be an issue at all. Just place some shulker boxes full of potions here. So did a dog ever die? or No, oh. never lost a dog. Okay. Now in case you're wondering, sometimes skeletons spawn with swords on it, it's why... Actually, uh, that happens quite often on this server right here, because we are at day 39,000, and yep. at the moment the local difficulty is almost as high as it gets. It's 3.56, so it could go to 3.75, I think. Then you have the highest chances of skeletons spawning with armor. I think this also affects uh, the amount of time you spend in a chunk, also affects the difficulty somehow. But I'm not even sure if that even is even Definitely displayed. Not a, not a simple thing that yeah. happens there. It's like after three days it resets, I think. Or like after five days, and then it starts over again. Hmm. And do you also um, store the bones and arrows somewhere? Or? No, I just void them because it's not nowhere near enough to supply the farm. Okay. And yeah, here's a hopper minecart mm, here. If I have to go to the storage to get bones anyway, then it's like, why even bother <laughs> with another storage? Yeah, we still have enough bones, but we actually need this leaf farm to get a new bone mill supply because our old mob farm is broken, also the wizard skeleton farm is broken. And yeah, we built this uh, mob farm, I think it was half a year ago with JL. It requires a ton of leaves and it was actually the reason why we built this. Okay, so anything else I forgot to mention? I think that's it. Okay, then yeah, that's the end of the episode. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day. Bye bye. Bye.